What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dave and I create content around running, shoe reviews and my life. I'm back reviewing running shoes and the shoe that I have with me today has actually surprised me quite a lot. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it straight out of the blocks, this shoe has the most comfortable upper in the history of uppers. Well, at least in the shoes that I've tried anyway. I've got with me here the Mizuno Neo Vista in all of its bluey glory. As a disclaimer guys, I pay for this shoe with my own money and everything that I say is my own opinion and you should take it with a pinch of salt. Best thing that you can do is go to your local running store, try a whole bunch of shoes on, see what works best for you and for your foot and then happy days. Now that that's out of the way, for today's full review, I'm going to explain to you guys why I think this shoe is the biggest contender for easy day shoe of the year, if that's even a thing why I love this shoe, when I've been using it. Oh, and of course, I'm gonna be going through a couple of dislikes too, but let's get into it. Of course, it wouldn't be a full review if I didn't quickly go through a couple of the specs and we're gonna do it rapid fire style once again. So it's got a 44.5 millimeter stack height with an eight millimeter drop. It comes in at 265 grams, which is honestly pretty competitive um, comparing to the Hoka Skyward X that comes in at a whopping 320 grams or the Supercomp Trainer V2 that weighs 282 grams. It's rocking Mizuno's next generation eco-friendly midsole foam, the Mizuno Energy Next. It's got a full length plant-based glass infused wave plate, which stabilizes the maximal stack and highly cushioned midsole. Damn, that was a mouthful. God damn, he is quick. So why do I love it? I've done the majority of my easy and recovery runs in this shoe and it's where I truly believe that it's at its best. It's soft but stable and somehow it just works really well with my stride, ultimately feeling really pleasant to run easy in. The stability that it brings with these guided lines on the bottom of the outsole seems to just really keep your foot in check, which is really nice if your ankles tend to roll in when you stride like myself and it's got a really nice wide platform or footbed which really accommodates for that and feels really nice once you start to roll into your stride. And you guys know that I love a nice wide footbed. The Neo Vista, it genuinely has a really, really comfortable ride, which I haven't felt in a shoe since maybe the Gel Nimbus 25. Um, but this shoe definitely doesn't feel as dead and it is nowhere near as heavy, which I explained earlier. It being as cushioned as it is with a stack this big and only coming in at 265 grams, is I think one of the reasons why I love this shoe so much. Let's not forget about the booty upper, the booty upper. <laughs> that just uh, somehow it just molds to your foot without feeling like too much and it just works perfectly. So I think this shoe is just a really smooth, comfortable and definitely competitive option um, in the Super Trainer game. <laughs> So I have to go through some of my dislikes. Look, I'd be lying if I said that I loved the design and the colorway of this shoe. The booty style upper, while it works really great and is actually extremely functional, I just don't really like the look of it. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the comments if you are really liking this upper shape. I don't think I'm gonna get many comments. I think that if they change the color to maybe all black, um, something that you could maybe, or maybe even all white, something that you could match with a sock without it being too much. I think it would kind of hide the shape of the, the I guess the booty shape um, of the like sock-like liner. Um, and I think it would look a little bit better, um, but with just blue and the best you could do is like a blue sock. And I feel like nobody really wants to be running around with like blue all the way from their toes all the way up to halfway up their shin. But yeah, I don't know. And my second and last dislike is probably the heel counter. While I don't really notice it while I'm running, um, I did notice that while I was walking, I could feel a like a bit of slippage, a bit of rubbing. I know it is a running shoe and it's not really designed to be walked in, but you do find yourself walking in it a fair bit. Um, and yeah, it's just 
it seems a little bit unnecessary how just how pronounced that this like U shape is here. Like surely they could have made it, I don't know, maybe bring these up a little bit higher and then, you know what? Similar to the, what is it called? The new on shoe that that's got like the boot like upper. I think that's a way better looking aesthetic for, um, for a slip on shoe. They've got some work to do with the shape of this, but functionally beautiful. So when do I use it? I don't really use this for my speed or my tempo days, but like I said before, I think this shoe really shines in the easy and recovery category. Don't get me wrong, you could probably use this shoe for your longer runs. Um, and to be honest, if I didn't have the Superblast 2 that I just bought, this would probably be my first pick to wear on those longer runs. But something about the shoe just gives me the vibe that when I'm two hours deep, into the long run that it may get a little bit mushy and may not give me what I feel like I would want to get back from a shoe two hours deep into a long run. Um, but I'm completely talking off what ifs because I haven't run two hours plus in this shoe. So if you have the shoe and you've run, uh, you know, two hours plus, let me know how you go with that. Because I could definitely be wrong here and I'm happy to admit that it's just speculation for me right now. But that's just, that's the vibe that I was getting from this shoe. But yeah, wearing this shoe has honestly been so enjoyable. It's something that I actually get excited to put on and it makes my easy runs feel that much easier. Could you wear this for a speed session? I think yes, but would I? Probably not. Just because I already have so many other options to choose from for my speed days. So I don't really find myself reaching for this softer option. But if you really wanted to, I think the Neo Vista would hold up decently well as long as you're not pumping out 200s or 400 reps. I think you'd honestly be okay. So if you're looking for a shoe that you can leave the laces tied up, slide the shoe on and out the door you go, then this is the shoe for you. If you're a beginner runner looking for one shoe that's on the slightly more softer side that can do it all, then this is the shoe for you. If you're looking at pumping out some serious mileage and marathon prep, while also feeling protected and comfortable, then this is the shoe for you. So let me know in the comments below guys, if you have any further thoughts or opinions on the Neo Vista. Look, in conclusion, I'm really loving what Mizuno is bringing to the table lately. I've just received a new pair of the Wave Sky 8s and I've ran them a couple of times now. It's looking like a decent daily trainer, maybe to work as a firmer partner to the Neo Vista, possibly. It's giving me a little bit of Cloud Monster vibes, but I won't say anymore. That is gonna conclude my full review of the Mizuno Neo Vista. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content. Share it with running buddies, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.